Yo, 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 stop, stop, stop. Everybody just stop, freeze. Hammer time. It's St. Paul. What's up? Listen, I'm here today to talk to you all, but I want you to stop all this goody two-shoes thing that you got going on right now, thinking that we're all good, we're all having a little fun time here in Howell, Michigan. Yeah, having fun. Just stop. That's not what this retreat's going to be about. That's not what this night's going to be about. It's going to be about something a lot more than that. So listen, all you people that think it's a game, Dewey, Sloan, Cross, Sage, Page, Kylie, Schmitz, Hannibal, Ruby, just stop. Just stop. God, he's calling all of us to be good people. But he's calling all of us to be something so much more than that. To be new people. To be new in him. To be transformed by him. See, look at You say, oh, hey, I go to youth group, St. Paul. You know, I go to church, St. Paul. I mean, I do some community service, St. Paul. That's good. That's good. I mean, I'm doing more than my friend at high school right now. They didn't go to church. They didn't go to youth group. I mean, I'm doing good, St. Paul. Well, guess what? I'm here to tell you tonight that just good, it ain't good enough. Because here's how it works. The only person we should be comparing ourselves to is Christ. Christ. We become new in Him. And He's the only standard that you should be comparing yourself to. Not anybody else around you, not your friends, your family, whatever. He's the only person that you compare yourself to and you become new in him. Now check it. I got this thing called the Bible, right? Most sold book ever for a reason. Wrote a couple of verses up in her, a couple of these. One from Philippians chapter 1, verses 3, verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So look, it's the same thing, right? None of us have reached perfection. None of us are perfect. We aren't going to reach perfection again until we have absolute salvation and we're with him again united in heaven. See, we're born perfect, right? We're born innocent and free of all that stuff. And we know that as human beings, we mess up. And we're never going to be perfect here on this earth. But we are going to keep pressing on and striving for perfection every day of our lives, every heartbeat that we have as best we can. And the best way to do that is to become new, a new person in him, through him. And check this other verse out I wrote, right? My letter to the Corinthians. What's up? How you doing, Corinthians? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, and the new is here to stay. The new is here to stay. And let me tell you something, all right? That new thing, that new thing about you guys, I mean, there's one thing God can never, ever stop doing, and that's loving you. But you have to be willing to accept His grace. His grace is unstoppable. It's unfathomable. It'll reach into the depths of your soul and your heart and just transform everything about you. But you have to let it. You have to let it. So listen up. I want the core team right now, this second, to rip down all these cheesy decorations, all right? I'm talking about Audra, Dan, Don Parker, Don Pizzi, Nancy Dewey, Mrs. Dewey. I like that name, Dewey. Rip all these props down, all these phony things, all this talk about just being good. 
Because that's, that's not good enough. God's calling us to be great. He's calling us to be new in him. I mean, check it. Yo, St. Paul here, right? St. Paul. You guys remember my story? When I used to be Saul? And I was persecuting people. I was, you know, I thought what I was doing was good. I thought it, I thought it was right. And then I got kicked off my horse, man. I got booted off of there. Just bam. Off my horse and I was, I was just blinded, man. I was blinded. It was, it was so dark. Because I was blind. And then I remember all of a sudden, all of a sudden I was like, man, I just, I just need, I need So straight up, I felt like Kanye West for a minute, right? That I wanted all of the lights to come back on. I wanted it so badly to just, to just be able to see something visually, tangibly, see something with my eyes. But then I realized that I didn't need fluorescent light and neon lights and incandescent lights and flashing lights in order to see, I could already see clearly with the light in my heart. And so when I was blinded by the light and finally able to see, it wasn't that light that we see in this room or that Thomas Edison spent over a thousand tries working to invent to have electricity in all these places around us, in our homes, our schools and churches. It was being blinded by the light of Christ, the light of Christ that's, that's in all of us. It's his desire to transform you. It's, it's his desire to interrupt your life, but you have to let it happen. Sometimes, God wants to interrupt our lives and shake us up a little bit, but we need to allow that to happen. And when we do, it's beautiful because his grace, his love, his everything pouring out for us, it's unstoppable. It's that unstoppable iceberg right ahead, right towards your heart. But you have to let it in. And that's up to you. Because once you become that new person, not just a good person, but a great one, you let Jesus, Christ, God, our Lord and Savior, touch your heart by giving you his life his life and his love for you, for you with love. I'm St. Paul. I'll be praying for you. Peace.